um, briefly the central nervous system that we did yesterday. Um, we are not going to go into any detail. We will only look at the structure of the central nervous system and the functions. And then we'll also look at the spinal cord. And then we'll start learning a little bit more about the peripheral nervous system. So um, please remember, send me a, uh, a chat message if, there's, um, if I'm going too fast or if there's any extra work that you'd like to see. Um, or answer. Um, today we are going to look at the peripheral nervous system. So we'll look at the somatic and the autonomic um, nervous system and then we'll also play a Kahoot. Um, if you have played Kahoot before, just give a little thumbs up or a yes or something in the chat so that I know that you know how to access Kahoot before we play. So if you have played Kahoot before, just give me a little thumbs up or Say yes or smiley face or something affirmative. All right, so first let's look at the work that you need to know for the peripheral nervous Kahoot. Have you played Kahoot? I will quickly type Kahoot for you in the, in the message. So That is the website, gohoot.com, and it's an online quiz, so you answer questions that you see on my screen. Um, so if you've played Gohoot before, Gohoot, it's a game. But don't worry if you haven't, we'll get there when we get there and I'll explain everything. So we are going to look at the peripheral nervous system. You will have to know the location and functions of the peripheral nervous system. Those are the cranial and the spinal nerves. So you just need to know what is the, where do we find them and what is the, the function. Then we look at the autonomic nervous system. We need to know the location and function of that, both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic sections. And then you also need to go and learn a little bit about the structure and the function of a nerve. We will look at three types of nerves. You just need to be able to identify the nucleus, the cell body, cytoplasm, myelin sheath, the axon, and the dendrites. And if it all sounds like Greek to you, hopefully by the end of the lesson, you will have a little bit more clarity of what the, the words mean. So let's start looking at the work from yesterday. Just a brief, brief, brief um, summary. Now, your brain is protected by your skull or your cranium and three very thin membrane layers, the duramata, pia mater, and arachnoid process. Your cerebrum is the biggest part of your brain, and that is, or the largest part, it controls voluntary action. So anything where you have a choice, that is what the cerebrum um, controls. Then it also interprets and receives information from all your sensory organs, so sight, taste, smell, um, touch. It is responsible for all the higher order thinking, so memory, um, reasoning, uh, intelligence. It allows for communication between the left and the right side, and that is the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum Remember, your, your brain is a left side and a right side, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, and the corpus callosum is the part that joins those two. Now, if you didn't attend yesterday's lesson, all the information is available at teamgeeks.com. I also post all my lessons on the Twitter page, and we'll go back to the Twitter page at the end of the lesson so you can get the, the Twitter link. Then you have your cerebellum. That's a very small part of your brain just behind the cerebrum. It coordinates your skeletal muscles. It's responsible for balance, for your posture, and for muscle tone. Then you have your medulla oblongata. That's the brain stem. It controls breathing, peristalsis, heartbeat swallowing, everything that you have no control over. You can't control your heart rate. You might hold your breath, but eventually you will start breathing again. That is all due to the medulla oblongata. Um, 
It's also the hypothalamus is right in the middle of your brain, in the center. It's just above the pituitary gland, and that controls homeostasis. Sleep, temperature, your emotions, hunger, thirst, etc. This was just a brief overview of what we did yesterday. Let's look at the spinal cord. So this is all new. Now remember, your spinal cord has the exact same protecting layers that the brain has. So your spinal cord is made up of your delicate nervous tissue, which cannot repair itself. It is therefore protected by 33 vertebra. Those make up your spine. And in between, you have cartilage. Um, in between your vertebra, you have cartilage. That is just to absorb the shock. Now, as we get older, that cartilage might wear off. And that is why when you are much older than you are now, you start getting lower back pain or you get back ache. And that is because that little bit of cartilage is starting to wear off. It absorbs all the shock. You have three membranes called the meninges. And then you have cerebrospinal fluid. So your um, spinal cord is protected by a bony layer and by cerebrospinal fluid and by three um, membranes called the meninges, very similar to your brain. The only difference is your brain is protected by the cranium and your spinal cord is protected by the vertebra. Um, Tabani, I will up, all the slides will be in the Google folder um, for you to upload. All right, so that's it. The spinal cord, if you have, let me just go back to that. If you have an injury to your spinal cord, depending on the severity of your spinal cord, you will be paralyzed from below, from the point of injury and below. So if your, uh, your spinal cord is um, injured closer to your neck, you will be a quadriplegic. And if your spinal cord is injured below your arms or below your rib cage, you'll only be a paraplegic. Quad means four, para is two. Quad is four, so you won't have the use of your arms or your legs if you're quadriplegic. If you're a para paraplegic, you still have the use of your arms and hands. You won't be able to walk though. All right, then we look at the nervous system. So this is what we looked at yesterday. We spent time on this yesterday. Today, we are going to spend time on the peripheral nervous system. Now the peripheral nervous system is subdivided into the autonomic and the somatic. Now the autonomic is involuntary. You cannot control that. And that again is subdivided in the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So we are gonna first focus on the autonomic nervous system and then we will learn more about the somatic nervous system. The autonomic auto means on its own, like automobile, it's moving on its own, even though you're driving it. The autonomic nervous system, you have no control over it. Your somatic, you do have control over. Thank you very, very much, Kalindri. All right, so here we have another um, visual for you to see. So your central nervous system is the brain and the spine brain and the spine and remember it's protected by your skull or your cranium the cerebrospinal fluid and the meninges and you've got your spinal cord protecting your um, your vertebra protecting your spinal cord now we have the peripheral nervous system and this is all the nerves in your body these include all the nerves in your body we are going to first look at the autonomic nervous system and this is the nervous system that communicates with your organs and your glands. Your organs and your glands. So you have no control whatsoever over this nervous system. Um, your somatic nervous system is your muscles and your sense organs. And that we can control to a certain extent. So let's first look at the... Um, the nervous system, so here you have your nerves um, and it's divided in the autonomic and the somatic nervous system. Now the somatic nervous system controls voluntary muscles, 
I know I repeat myself, but it's very important. It's very um, vocab heavy. So it's always good if you study to draw yourself a little diagram. Draw yourself a flow diagram so that you know which is which. So your autonomic nervous system has got the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Your somatic is the one that you can control. It is all the nerves to the muscles. Now I want you to look at this little boy running away and we had this picture yesterday. Please name all, everything that happens if you get a fright. So if you get a fright and you have to run, what happens to your breathing? What happens to your heart rate? What will happen to um, your eyes, your pupils? If you have a big fright, think a little bit. How do you feel when you have a big fright? What happens to your heart rate? What happens to your breathing? So think a little bit about it. And if you'd like, just comment in the comment what happens when you have a big, big fright. Um, and why is this happening? So you're, we're going to look at your autonomic nervous system. But please list all the things that happen if you get a big fright. Your heart beats faster. Yep, your body releases lots of adrenaline. And remember, adrenaline is from the adrenal gland. And the autonomic nervous system controls glands. So lots of adrenaline is, is released. You breathe very, very deeply because you want to get all that oxygen to your muscles so that you can run faster. Your heart rate beats faster so that your body can send all that blood to your muscles. So your eyes see the snake. And what happens is if your eyes see the snake, your pupil dilates, it becomes bigger. Your optic nerve tells your body to run and you start making it to the safe place. So optic nerve sends to the brain, but first your pupil becomes bigger, your heart beats faster so that more blood goes to your muscles, you breathe deeper so that more oxygen goes to your body. So whenever you have to think of the difference between the autonomic nervous system and what, what it controls, always think of someone running away from a snake. What happens to the body? So we know it is the organs and the adrenal glands that will be um, supplied by these nerves. Things we have no control over. So you have two types of systems in your autonomic um, nervous system, two types, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Now sympathetic is when you get a big, big fright. Parasympathetic is when you are very, very relaxed. So sympathetic is when you are scared. So for sympathetic for scared, what happens when we're scared? Parasympathetic is when we're just at home. All right, we are pleased, we are at home. So when you're scared, you'll have an increase of heart rate, your um, blood pressure increase, because remember, we have to send all that blood to the different muscles. Your bronchioles, which is in your lungs, dilate. And who can tell me why the bronchioles, which is inside your lung, why will they dilate? Remember, um, this textbook is the life science textbook that has been distributed by the Department of, in, um, of Education and it's for free online. So if you just Google um, life science grade 12, this textbook is for free online. Um, so let me get back to this. Your bronchioles, it's inside your lungs. Why do you think your bronchioles, which is found inside your lungs and they absorb the oxygen, why do you think they dilate? Why do they become bigger? Yep, I have one answer here. To hold more oxygen. You need oxygen for your muscles to work. So if you breathe deeper, your, your muscles will have lots of oxygen. So that's why they um, dilate. Decrease peristalsis. So if you've had a big meal just before you are running, your body will stop digestion and all the blood will be sent, well not all, most of the blood will be sent to your muscles so you can run away. Um, it causes, oops, no. 
It also, let me just get back and I'll explain. It also causes the muscle wall to relax. It causes your muscle wall to relax. And that is why when people have a big, big fright, sometimes they urinate on themselves. It is because the relaxation of this bladder wall and um, it's something that can't be helped. You sweat a lot more. And why do you think you sweat more if you have a fright and you have to run? Why would you sweat more? All right, so the reason why you get cramps while I'm waiting for answers is, it's a buildup of lactic acid. It's just a buildup of lactic acid. If you, um, that's why you get cramps in your legs. If you get cramps like in the, on your side, it is, it is just because of, you know, unfitness. There's no other reason. It's a lack of oxygen to that part of the body. Um, so that's why. But if you get cramps, to regulate your body temperature, to cool you down. Now remember, if you run a lot, you will increase your body temperature. There will be more heat released because all the blood vessels close to your skin will dilate. If something dilates, it becomes bigger. And so you will lose a little bit of heat, you'll feel warmer and you'll have to be cooled down. So if you sweat, it cools you down. It cools you down when you are running so you can keep running away from the snake. So remember, sympathetic, snake, scared. So if you have to write the difference in the exam, this is how you can remember it. Your pupils dilate so you can see danger better and lots of adrenaline will be secreted. Well done, lots of adrenaline. When you are chilled at home, when you are pleased and not in the fear, your heart rate slows down, your blood vessels close to your skin um, will dilate, your blood pressure comes down, you don't have to have those big bronchioles, your breathing won't be as deep, peristalsis will happen easier, you won't sweat more or less, there's no effect on your adrenaline, and your bladder wall will contract. So when we are at ease and when we are calm, our parasympathetic system is in place, when we are stressed, when we are scared, the sympathetic nervous system is in place. This is also why if we are stressed, it's very similar symptoms than when we are scared. Our body is in constant stress, and so this will happen constantly if you are under lots of stress. Any questions about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic? All you have to know is where it's located, it is the um, nerves to the glands and the, uh, the organs. And you need to know the difference between the parasympathetic when you're pleased and not stressed and sympathetic when you're stressed and scared. Any questions about those two? All you need to know is the location and the function, nothing more. All right, I assume silence means no questions. Then we have the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system communicates with sense organs and it's voluntary. We have control over that. And there are two types of neurons, motor neurons and sensory neurons. So motor neurons is for motor output, movement. Sensory neurons is for sensory input, when we sense something, we feel something. You only need to know about the two types, nothing else. Somatic nervous system is nerves to the muscles and sense organs. That's all you have to know, the location, the sense organs and the voluntary muscles. You have sensory nerves for the sense organs and motor neurons for the muscles. All right, so this is a neuron. This is a basic neuron. A neuron is the structural unit of the nervous system. Neurons are specialized cells which connect the brain and the spinal cord 
to all the other parts of the body. Now remember, we have different types of, ner of nerves, but you only need to know the function of the parts you see here. So because it is a cell, it will need a cell body. And the cell body is this entire structure in the middle. The entire structure in the middle. And like all cell bodies, inside the cell body, we have cytoplasm. Inside the cell body, we have cytoplasm. Then we have a nucleus. Now the nucleus is like all other body cells, where um, it's the center of where the genetic material is kept, where all the, the functions of the cell is controlled. Then we have dendrites. Dendrites are found on the cell body. Then we have an axon terminal. So all the impulses come through the dendrites. They move down the axon and they move out the axon terminal. We will learn more about that later. So I'm just showing you the pathway. Signals move through the dendrites, down the axon, out through the axon terminal. So the axon is just for transport. All you need to know is about myelin. Myelin is like a very special type of cells that protects the axon. So here we have it. We have dendrites. Dendrites transmit impulses towards the cell body. So all the impulses from your, from your organs and your muscles travel through the dendrites to the cell body and then all the way down the axon. All the way down the axon, the cell body controls metabolism of the cell just like all other cell bodies. You have an axon. The axon transfer them or transmit the impulses away from the cell body. You have a myelin sheath, and the myelin sheath, it just insulates the axon. So it speeds up transmission. It's a little bit like when you look at copper wire, when you look at the copper wire. So the dendrites will be the plug where the electricity comes from. It moves down the copper wire and then into the appliance you are using. But when we have copper wire, we always put insulation tape around it. So the myelin sheath is a little bit like insulation tape. It insulates the axons and it speeds up transmission because it insulates it. The signals can't go anywhere but travel down the axon. Let me just go back there. All right, so let's quickly just go over this one more time. So you have your dend dendrites, it receives the signals towards the cell body. Then from the cell body, it moves all the way down the axon. And then when it's reached the terminal ends, it moves through to the next cell body. We will learn a little bit about this area. It's called the um, synapse tomorrow. For today, you just need to know the functions of the dendrites, the cell body, the axon, and the myelin sheath. We have three types of neurons. So we have three types of neurons. You should just be able to identify them. So we have sensory neurons. Remember, this is the sympathetic nervous system. Sensory neurons. We have interneurons. They connect a sensory neuron to a motor neuron. Because if you touch a hot plate, you need to be able to lift your hand very quickly. So your sensory neuron will feel the burn, your motor neuron will move your, or make the muscle move your arm. So you need an interneuron, and then you have motor neurons for muscles. Motor neurons for muscles and glands. You only need to be able to identify these neurons by looking at them. You only need to be able to identify them by looking at them. So the sensory neuron will have the cell body in the middle. The interneuron will have the cell body below the dendrites and motor neurons are surrounded by neurons, uh, by dendrites. So it's all about where we find the cell body. Cell body for the sensory neuron is in the middle, it's on the side. 
for the interneuron, it's below dendrites. And for a motor neuron, the dendrites surround the cell body. You just need to be able to identify the different neurons, as well as dendrites, axons, cell body, and nucleus. Any questions up to here? All right, no questions is good then. Um, remember, you can still send a private message and then I will respond. So how Kahoot works? And our lovely host, Miss Mel, might need to help me here because this is the first time I try it. Um, so what we need to do is you need to have a separate device. Um, or you need to log into a different um, gosh, what's the word page? So you have to go to www.gohood.it and then they will ask you for a code and you sign in with this code. If you don't sign in, if you don't sign in with the code, that is fine because I can still show you Kahoot um, without the use of, um, I can still show you the Kahoot without you doing it on your own. You just need to type the answer in chat then. All right. Um, just give me a thumbs up. Are you able? Oh, thank you. I see one person is in. Can you all see the Kahoot screen? So if you can't log into Kahoot. Ah, see, I've learned something. You can use your browser. You wouldn't need to see Zoom for this spot. There we go. Yeah, you don't need, you can just go to another browser. That's the word I was looking for. You go to another browser. You type in www.kahoot.it and then you use this to sign into a room. And you can pick yourself a nickname or you can use your real name. Just keep them above board and then we can play. So I'm gonna give you all a little bit of time to sign in. We're gonna give you a little bit of time to sign in. Um, you go to another browser and you type in kahoot.it and you sign in. Well done, I'm very chuffed with you guys. You are much more savvy than I am. Usually what I do is I Google how to do things and sometimes I Google how to Google, so. If you have trouble logging in, just let me know in the chat and we can see if we can assist you. I'm going to give one more minute. We're gonna give you one more minute to sign in. So just relax a little bit if you are already signed in. Welcome to everyone who signed in. Now how Kahoot works is it gives you a question with four options. Um, but instead of only having an A, B, C or D, you also have a square, a circle, um, a rectangle and a triangle and they are all different colors, red, green, blue, and yellow. And then on your screen, you have to click on the correct answer. So you just touch or tap the correct answer. And that's it. That's all you have to do. All right, guys. If you are struggling to sign in, that's fine. There we go. We've got another person. Well, welcome, Mary. Welcome, welcome. So, and then after everyone has submitted the answers, it will come up. Now, this is a little bit competitive. It is a little bit competitive because at the end, it shows you who answered first. It shows you who's on a winning streak. You get medals at the end if you've answered all of them correctly. It's a great activity to practice. It's a great activity to practice. Ah, oh, thank you very much, ma'am, for putting up the pin. I think if you change browser, it might be difficult. All 
All right. So 15 seconds, 10 seconds, and I'm starting. All right. So this is an overview of the nervous system. I will explain questions to you. So, Zoom also, uh, Kahoot also has the most annoying soundtrack. So what you need to do is, well done, fantastic. Guys, you are the best. Well done, Anne. So the division of the nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. Which one is it? Ah, it's the central nervous system. Remember, the brain and the spine forms the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is made up of the autonomic and somatic nervous system. And uh, cerebral is just one part of your brain. If you are cerebral, you're quite brainy. So you are all quite cerebral. What is the peripheral nervous system made up of? We've just heard that today. Thirty third pair of one, twelve of the other. Well done. It is the cranial and spinal nerves. All the nerves that go to your brain. All the nerves that go to your spine make up your peripheral nervous system. Well done, guys. I see you're giving each other a go here. Well done. So nerve cells are also known as neurons, dendrites, axons, or myelins. Think very careful about it. Can a part of something be the whole thing? And the... Neurons. Remember, dendrites, myelin sheaths, and axons all make part of a nerve cell. They are also known as neurons. Well done, Kale. You have a three winning streak row. So this is the sheath that is around your axon that protects it. It's like the insulation tape around um, an electric wire. Fantastic, the myelin sheath. Exactly, it's like the insulation tape around wires. Phew. Fast fingers, well done. Aha, uh -huh. so what do we call the nerve cell fibers that conduct signals to the cell body of neurons? What do we call it's around the cell body in motor neurons? It's around the, it's around the cell body in motor neurons. Fantastic. I'm going to So what do we call the part that conducts impulses away from the cell body? It conducts it away from the cell body. A little hint there for you. Come on, come on, come on. You only have a few seconds. Oh, it's the axon. The axon conducts nerves uh, 
um, impulse away from the cell body. So I mentioned this word before we ended, and I said we'll look at this tomorrow. So this is the junction between an axon of one cell and the dendrite of another. And it sounds like snap a little bit. All right, the answer is a synapse. So tomorrow we will learn a little bit more about synapses. So reception of stimuli from outside, well, where do we get this from? From outside world is a function of this, the peripheral nervous system or the central nervous system. Remember, you see the snake. Yep, this is the peripheral nervous system. It's from outside. Oh, guys, fast fingers, fast fingers. I see, I wonder if Anne has left us. So this type of receptor responds to temperature change. And remember when we are, there's a, a clue on the post, we use a thermometer when we measure temperature. So which ones will remind you of a thermometer? That's the one that feels temperature change. Aha, thermoreceptor. Thermo means temperature receptor. And that is what will feel the heat. It's a thermoreceptor. Oh, empire is indeed on top of the empire. Well done. Oh, so let's see if you can guess this one. We haven't done it yet, just take a guess. No receptors. Which one? Is it warmth? Remember, warmth is temperature. Is it pain, touch, or sound? So let's see if you could guess. So the answer is pain. We feel pain through these receptors. And do you know that there are some people who don't have these receptors and they can't feel pain? and they, they injure themselves all the time because they can't feel that they're injured. So what are the three levels? So you have to receive something, you have to respond, but there's something in between. You have to receive and you have to respond, but there's something in between. All right, so you receive something, it moves through your sensory, um, your, um, your nerves, and then you perceive it. We have three legs. So clusters of neural, neuron cell bodies within the peripheral nervous system is known as this. So we know that two of these, oh, I almost gave you the answer, you can ignore. One of them, we know it cannot be because that is a function, so what is left? So in the exam, if you're not sure, well done, guess. It can't be axons and it can't be receptors because those are all part of the cell. The nerve is the entire nerve, the nerve body. So we know that lots of nerve cells is known as a ganglia. Oh, so I'll give you a bit of a clue. Olfactory is your smell. Your vagus nerve is also in your, at the top. So which one would it be? Olfactory is smell, your vagus nerve is also um, found near your head. So what will the, which would it be? Or, 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 or are all three, all right? They are all three cranial nerves. All three are responsible for, for the senses in your, in your face or in your head. Last, now I know this is a tricky one that you don't have to know. You don't have to know this, so just take a guess. Mm. 
Now, if you like watching things like House or gosh, Chicago Hope or any medical drama, the vagus nerve, it goes from the head into your upper body and into your abdomen. So it stretches all the way from the top of your head all the way through your body, your abdomen, it ends in the, or it ends in the abdomen. So let's see who the winner is. Wow, well done. Fastest finger counts. Well done. All right, so some people ended the talk before or ended the game before the time. Um, oh, and I forgot to do that. So this is our last question and I forgot to put the, um, the answers to animate them in. So you can see for this one, part A is a dendrite, that's the cell body. We have an axon, the myelin sheath wraps around it. This is the cell body. And the job of the axon is to transmit impulses away from the cell body. The job of the myelin sheath is to um, insulate it. And if you have any extra things, you can go on there. Tomorrow, we will look at synapses and we will look at the reflex arc. We will look at the reflex arch and we will look at the synapses. If there's anything else you'd like to ask, please do here. This section of work is purely study work. You need to sit, make notes, and study. All right, I see that there's lots of chats. Oh my gosh. So sometimes, yes, as... Um, Mrs. Mel suggested it's good to have a second device. Oh, I'm so, so sorry, Simpiwe. Sometimes it helps to have a second device. Um, and I know you'd like to compete. So um, maybe you can also answer in the chat then and I'll keep the chat open and we can see what people answer. All right, guys, do you have any, any, um, so for the links, please go to the Team Geek um, or the Digital School website. Everything will be there. Or you can go to my um, Twitter page and let me just quickly get this for you. It's brand new, so I don't know it off by heart yet. And if you forget it, um, my name is Lizelle or short Liz. So 217 on a calculator, if you flip it upside down, spells Liz. And my name, so I'm Mrs. 217V. So it's Liz V, Liz van Beek. Um, everything will be there for you. That's just for everyone. I see I posted it in the private chat. Guys, do you have any, any question for me? Do you have any questions for me about the work? I hope you have a fantastic weekend, rest up. Um, and then I'll see you all on Monday online. And remember the classes will still be at three and we will look at the synapse and we'll look at the, the reflex arch and we will um, just revise a little bit what we've done today. So the peripheral nervous system, we'll just go over it briefly just to get you up to speed because it is important to remember the anatomy of a nerve to learn about a synapse.
So I have to admit, I still type with two fingers if I type. So it takes me a little bit longer to find things and post things. All right, guys, I'll be on here for a little bit. If we see that no one is asking questions, um, I assume that there aren't any, please um, leave them here or we will end the meeting and then I'll catch up with you on Monday. All right, I think that's goodbye then. Catch you on Monday.